हेलो हाय एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू आर चैनल लिटिल अंडर रेटेड होप यू आर ऑल डूइंग वेल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू चेक आउट अ वीडियो फॉर द शेफ व्हिच इज टाइटल्ड एज फाइव ग्रेट स्टॉक्स एट अमेजिंग डिस्काउंट सो इट्स बी इंटरेस्टिंग टू सी व्हिच स्टॉक्स ही टॉक्स अबाउट एंड टू व्हिच पर्टिकुलर सेक्टर दे बिलोंग एंड आल्सो इफ दे आर मिड कैप स्मॉल कैप और लार्ज कैप आई थिंक प्रोबेबली मोस्ट ऑफ देम विल बी और लार्ज कैप बट लेट्स सी एंड जंप टू द वीडियो Hi everyone welcome to today's video so there are two narratives that are going on in the market right now the first set of people they believe that you know what the us market has corrected by around 55% same thing is going to happen in indian market also that nifty is going to correct from 18000 level to 15000 level and then i will go and invest the second category of people say that you know what indian markets are fairly valued it's not as if that there is anything overvalued here and you keep on buying stuff at whatever levels prices you are getting at smart people what they are doing is that they are somewhere in the middle so what they are simply saying is that you know what really good assets are available at a discount identify them hold it for longer terms because these stocks have already gone two three year time corrections so on this video i am going to talk about five specific stocks that i am buying or i am likely to buy very near in the future whatever buying selling i am doing i will show you on this video via live clips now many of you will say that you know what you have not shown live investing for a while now uh, have you stopped investing no i invest fairly regularly and i give that commentary on the wisdom hatch community and youtube community as well so you could consider joining it now in case you are a completely new beginner and you just do not have time to invest in the stock market small case is a wonderful platform where you can go and invest your money in a thematic fashion so you can check some of my small cases there and accordingly take some bets so with that disclaimer out of the way let us kick start our conversation and let me give you a very quick macro view point that i have and then i will talk about five specific stocks so here you can take a look at the overall priciness of the indian market so this is nifty 50 chart and what you will notice is that this is 2018 almost right and this is 2020 3 beginning so this is roughly 4 and a half years and how much has our markets given it's 51% so on a cagr basis how much does this come out to be so it would come out to be roughly 9 9.5% cagr now you tell me in the comment box and seriously please pause the video and comment below that do you think that markets are currently hyper overvalued the short answer according to me is no i don't think that the markets are overvalued yes it is 100% correct that a lot of overvalued stocks in the past have corrected or are correcting and are going to correct so with that spirit in mind let me speak about five specific assets that i am bullish about and i am investing my money in or i am likely to invest my money in so the first stock that i am going to speak about is dmart now from the top how much has the stock corrected by it has corrected by roughly 35% so a natural question comes that hey is dmart going to fall more is it going to rise from this point what is going to happen tomorrow can you write it on a stamp paper and give me no i can't do that <laughs> and neither can i predict what is going to happen with the stock in the next 7 days but what i know for a fact that dmart is a good company there is no fundamental issue with dmart why am i saying is that just quickly go and check what are its profit numbers and sales number so let me do that exercise with you and then i will come back to technicals so here is the sales data and you can see that sales has been going up massively profits have been going up massively there has been no problem with sales and profits now the next question that people throw at me is that you know what inflation is high in the economy people are not buying stuff growth is slowing down yes agree but please think about what type of product does dmart sell is it selling like luxury cars luxury watches and people are paying like super premium products no dmart is a cost effective product game what they are playing they simply go out build more stores sell fmcg slash retail products at lower prices and replace it with their own house products that is what they are doing so high inflation high interest rate this that is it going to impact D mat so at least in the next 2 years it is not going to impact and neither it is impacting the business as of now yes small bumps here and there might keep on happening that you know what there is some supply chain issue or interest rate went up so dmart stopped expanding quite aggressively or they are not able to procure like sasti debt all that stuff will keep on happening and yes it will impact the growth prospects of the firm and that is precisely what has happened with business so from a fundamental standpoint there is no problem with dmart's business now comes the natural question then bhai why did the stock fell by almost 
35%. So for that, let me go to the technicals. So number one reason why DMART is now falling is this, that from the period 2020 all the way till here, it gave almost 350% run up. So the run up itself was quite aggressive. But if you do the stock analysis from 2018 onwards, so let me do that. So this is 2018. And if you consider the five year return on DMART, so it has gone up by 127%. Now, many of you would say that, okay, this is also very high number stock almost giving 127% return in a five year period. Okay. So homework for you, figure out what is the sales growth rate and profit growth rate for DMART is. If this 125% number is not justified, then DMART technically from a long term perspective is not a good buy. And if the number get justified, then it makes a lot of sense to buy buy something like DMART. Now let me show you another interesting point about DMART and this is a technical observation. What you will notice is that whenever the stock falls by roughly 30%, it gives a run up. For example, here you can see that the stock fell by almost 30%, then it gave a run up. And how much was this run up? So this run up came out to be almost 100%. Then it fell again by almost 35%. Then it gave another set of run up from here to here. How much was this run up? This was 210%. So now you will see that from its peak, the stock has fallen by roughly 35%. Now, is it waiting to create another run up? My bet would be a yes. For the entire 2020-2021, I wanted to buy DMART, but I missed the bus. But now I have started to build more position onto DMART. And here is me investing money live. Now, another point that you need to remember about DMART is that how are the current investors reacting to the loss in valuation by DMART, so to say, are they abandoning the ship? So here you can see that promoters haven't sold anything. FIIs, DIIs usually maintain around 15%. They have kept that intact. So hardly any change happening here. So, so it's not as if that from a current investor viewpoint, they are not believing in the valuation that DMART is getting. Now, of course, no one can predict what the real valuation of a company is. You, I, anyone else is just guessing here, but looking all these factors, I I believe that DMART is a good fundamental stock to consider right now. Now moving on to the second stock that I'm going to talk about and this is a US stock which is called as Tesla. It is one of the most talked about stocks. Why is that? I will discuss the reason and there are very important lessons. So don't skip this part just because it is a US stock. You will learn a lot as to why certain valuations get eroded. So here is the most interesting part about Tesla which is its price. That in the last one year Tesla has corrected by almost 70%. Now many people are not liking it and they are after Elon Musk's life that you know what how dare you that the stock has fallen by 70% where is your focus this that okay so let us have a quick conversation why has Tesla stock fallen and is it a good buy right now so fact number one is that Tesla grew up in value quite aggressively between the period 2020 and 2021 end how much just take a look at this number so it went from here to here so there was a 1600% return on Tesla's stock in that time span of course the stock was hyper over valued and almost crazy people were buying Tesla at that price point. Now it has corrected by almost 70% from here to here. So if you do the math and if you again do this analysis from end of 2020 onwards to this point, so how many years have passed? So almost three years have passed and the stock has given 75% return. So point number one is that Tesla is falling in value right now because it was hyper inflated stock to begin with. So it losing 70% value, you have to see it in the context that it first rose by 1600% in the first place. Point number two is the fact that Elon Musk himself sold Tesla's stock. He has said a lot of stuff that, you know what, I need to buy Twitter, therefore I'm selling Tesla. I feel that we have a recession ahead, therefore I'm selling my stock just to prepare for recession. I want to create some dry powder. Now, what is the meaning of dry powder? You let me know in the comment box. Other people will also learn from it. But to cut the long story short and people who can see through all this financial mumbo jumbo, there is a very simple explanation. He himself knew that Tesla stock is hyper overvalued. He probably did not get that why crazy people are buying his company stock at 1600% growth. And he ended up selling and selling it in large number. So here is the snippet as to how much Tesla stock he has sold and he has sold in billions of dollars. Now, whenever a promoter sells stake in his own company, there can be two reasons. One is that he is making mota paisa by selling it, which Elon Musk definitely made. And the second key reason would be that he does not believe fundamentally in the company. So it was a pump and dump scheme for him. So which of these two options am I more leaning towards? It's definitely option A. Elon Musk does believe in Tesla. It's not as if he's abandoning Tesla's stock. 
all he was simply trying to do was that he was trying to do profit booking in his own company which is absolutely fine there is nothing off about it especially if a company has given such high crazy returns now the third key factor was regarding the china factor so recently the news came that you know what the chinese slowdown has begun people are not buying electric vehicle in china and for tesla china is the second most important market not only from selling to its customers but also manufacturing tesla so tesla has a very large factory in china so what is the way ahead because this is the most important important prominent point that you need to consider right now in terms of making an investment in tesla or not making an investment in tesla so the first key aspect that you need to consider is that what is the elon musk's valuation premium that was assigned to tesla and to what extent has it been faded so here was a very interesting study that was done by refinet iv data stream so basically what they have pointed out is that hey at one point in time there was a specific premium that was assigned to tesla because elon musk was a lead promoter and in now that premium is wearing off and it is reaching similar valuation to other automotive players so this elon musk premium has gone away second key announcement that elon musk has made is that i am not going to sell any more tesla stock till 2024 i'll say that you know what elon musk is a dogla insan how should we trust elon musk why should we believe what he is saying okay don't believe him but believe the logic now why would he sell his stock now when it is trading at a 70% peak this gives you another interesting perspective that 2024 tak i am not going to sell my tesla stock anymore then this is most likely going to be a recovery phase for tesla now many of you ask me that hey how do we buy like us stocks so i personally use vested you can go check the links in the description box there is a very special offer for you as well so in case you want to take some positions in nasdaq s&p 500 or something like tesla so you could definitely go and check out vested now comes the third stock which is bajaj finance bajaj finance stock just yesterday corrected by almost 8 8.5% and today it fell by roughly 2% and finally i decided to build more of my positions in bajaj finance so let us understand the entire quick story about bajaj finance and if you want i will do a deep dive into bajaj finance stock so let me know in the comment box but here is a very quick snippet that you need to remember so point number 1 is that bajaj finance has fallen by roughly 22% from its top so this is the first key thing that you must notice the second key point is that hey there is a channel trading that is happening in bajaj finance and now two things can happen one is that the broad market on nifty 50 sensex it sustains the 18000 levels and starts climbing up then what is going to happen with a stock like bajaj finance is that from this point and it is already at this point it will start recovering and it will give a very sharp recovery scenario 2 is that that the entire nifty 50 or sensex breaks down and as a result bajaj finance corrects more and it can even go hypothetically till here it should not happen that but it is a possibility usually whenever we see these type of w shaped pattern it indicates a bullishness so this was preparing for a breakout but unfortunately it broke down because there is high volatility in the market right now and as a result bajaj finance also broke down with it now unfortunately the narrative in the market right now that is being painted is that you know what the aum or asset under management for bajaj finance has gone down so you need to understand that there is a difference between growth rate slow down and decline in business decline in business now what is the meaning these are small small words but they create a huge impact now business decline means that you know what the sales were let's say 200 crores then the sales become like 160 crores now this is a decline but in bajaj finance case what is happening is that let's say that this year their sales was 200 crores last year it was 190 crores so this was a 5% increase right so this year what has happened is that instead of a 5% increase maybe their growth rate increases 4% so it does not mean that the business has become bad it is just that their growth rate has slowed down so then comes the next logical question that hey why has the growth slowed down and is it like a bajaj finance specific problem or is it an entire broad market problem okay think about it this way that what type of business model does bajaj finance has so its business model is fairly simple that if you are taking small consumer loans fridge bike tv ac this type of stuff then you can go and avail bajaj finance loans so two things are happening one is that you tell me that interest rates in the economy what are they like they are very very high right now if you go and take a home loan emi then you will have to pay crazy amount of money you will get even with good credit around 9% home loan rates so these are fairly high right now so are you going to take more loans in this type of an economy or are you going to take less loans the short answer is that you will say that yaar agle saal khareed lenge ghar is saal nahi khareedte so you will push your decision of taking that loan so this applies to all types of loans so therefore their au 
QM growth rate has come down. So please don't mistake it that yes, Bajaj Finance has suddenly become a bad company. Okay, one counter argument that I get is that you know what, Bajaj Finance always trades at a very high premium. Uska P itna ho gaya, utna ho gaya. Okay, so let us very quickly analyze that also. See, just before COVID, and this is how many years? This is almost three years now. So three years, how much return has it given? It has given only 22% return from its current levels. So you tell me, for a stock like Bajaj Finance, which is a volatile stock, three-year return, 21%, is it very high? The answer is no, it is not. So to cut the long story short, Bajaj Finance is a decent stock. There is no problem with Bajaj Finance. Of course, this is not a push from my side that you also go and you know sell your house and invest in Bajaj Finance, nothing like this. Do whatever you like. My goal is to give you more clarity. The next stock that we are going to briefly talk about is Asian Paints. Again, the same story that you know what, Asian Paints is a deeply highly valued stock, this, that. Okay, so let us look at Asian Paints from almost here, almost three and a half, four years. How much return have we made? Almost 60%. So four years, 60% gain on Asian paints. Is it like very high, low? I would say that it is at a moderate level. It's not as if that this is very low return, but this is definitely not high for the number one paint company in India. So if you are considering a long-term technical viewpoint on this stock, then there is nothing fundamentally off in terms of pricing. Point number two, that how much discount are you getting Asian paints at right now? So you're getting it roughly at a 20% discount. So this is a decent discount that is going on on the stock. So let us very quickly check the fundamentals of the company that hey, are they able to maintain their sales growth rate and profit growth rate okay so take a look so you can clearly see that their sales has been growing on at a decent pace in fact the last trailing 12 months have been one of the best for the company same goes for profit so profit decline has not happened what has simply happened is that between 2021 and 2022 there were profit margin shrinkage why was that the case take a look at this graph it was simply because of the point that oil prices went up now, whenever oil prices go, paint companies are going to suffer. So as a result, their margins shrunk. They had no sales problem, but simply their expenses went up. Now, what is happening to the oil price? The oil price is coming down. Next, simply what is going to happen is, again, the HUL story might play out in Asian paints. So to cut the long story short, there is nothing off about Asian paints. They have the best pricing power. They have a very good distribution network. Stock is available at a discount. It is not hyper overvalued. Yes, anything can happen in the short term, but it is not as if that you're buying a hyper inflated asset. Now comes the fifth and final stock, which is one of my favorite stocks that I'd always wanted to aggregate more. It is Kotec Mahindra Bank. Okay, so if you take a look at the Kotec Mahindra Bank, what you will notice first thing is that, hey, it is available at a 20% discount. There is a very good technical pattern that is forming there. I teach all these technical patterns on my stock market course also and much more. And there's a community also for discussion. So in case you feel like that you will benefit, you could definitely check it out. So you can see that, hey, here is a technical pattern that is forming. This is called as reverse head and shoulder. And the target that comes out to be is somewhere here. And how much gain do you stand to make on something like Kotec Mahindra Bank right now? you at least stand to make 26-27% gain and this price point for the stock has already been tested which simply means that there is a very high likelihood that this stock will reach back its previous level. Now markets can recover in one year, markets can recover in two years, they can recover in 2.5 years and in that spirit I feel that if you are purchasing something like Kotec Mahindra Bank here and you hold it then at least you are going to make like roughly 30%. So even if it takes three years then by simple averages then you are making a 10% CAGR conservatively. Now, why haven't I discussed HDFC Bank? You guys let me know in the comment box. I'm not going to give you my commentary, but tomorrow I'm going to make a post about HDFC Bank and ICICI Bank on the member community tab. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Do press the like button and share it with your friends and I will see you soon. So it was a detailed video, uh, not much detail for some stocks like Kotal, he discussed those briefly but he has also not given his commentary. Now on other banks, uh, the competitors, ones ICICI, SS or HDFC, for those he will be uh, coming up with the post for member community section. Uh, we will keep on checking other useful videos as well, till then please subscribe to Little Underrated and I will see you in the next video, till then take care, bye bye.